Hello, Matu Jume, and you're watching Hornbill TV. Spam at 9, now news in details. Ukraine on Sunday agreed to hold talks with Russia in Belarus, the Russian state media said, quoting officials in Moscow. This came after President Vladimir Zelensky said Ukraine was willing to meet with Russia for peace talks, but not in a country that served as a staging ground for invasion. He said Ukraine was open for negotiations at other locations that were not showing aggression towards his country. Later, he took to his Telegram channel to state that he had spoken with Belarus leader Alexander Luk. Chanko. He provided no further details so far. Earlier, Russian President Vladimir Putin accused Ukrainian authorities of wasting an opportunity for negotiations after Moscow's invasion of its pro-Western neighbor. Russia said its delegation was ready to meet Ukrainian officials in the Belarusian city of Komel, a location key rejected as Zelensky said Minsk itself was complicit in the Russian invasion. Ukrainian officials had called to Kremlin's move a propaganda. International Judo Federation has suspended Russian President Vladimir Putin as the honorary president of the Federation on the grounds of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The sport's governing body made the announcement on Sunday. The International Judo Federation on Saturday said it had cancelled its May 20-22 Grand Slam event in Kazan, Russia. A judo black belt, the 69-year-old Russian president is a keen practitioner of the discipline and has co-authored a book titled Judo History Theory Practice. Russia has been stripped of other major sports events after its invasion of Ukraine intensified as St. Petersburg lost the Champions League final while the Formula One Grand Prix will not be held in Sochi. Even as the International Olympic Committee urged international sports federations to either move or cancel sports events currently planned in Russia or Belarus. Ukraine has taken Russia to the International Court of Justice in The Hague on day four of its invasion. The development comes even as Russia forces hit Ukrainian cities with artillery and cruise missiles. Their troops have entered Ukraine's second largest city, Kharkiv, head of the regional administration said. Ukraine has submitted its application against Russia to the ICJ. We request an urgent decision ordering Russia to cease military activity now and expect trial to start next week, Zelensky tweeted. The Kremlin has said a Russian delegation has arrived in the Belarusian city of Homel for talks with Ukrainian officials. Ukraine rejected the offer for talks in Belarus while keeping the door open for talks in other locations. Warsaw, Pratislava, Budapest, Istanbul, Baku. We propose all of them, Ukraine President Vladimir Zelensky said in an address posted online. Hundreds of mourners, including state legislators, organizations and public leaders, paid their last respect to the former minister of Nagaland, Dr. Kakheto Jumomi, who passed away yesterday after prolonged illness. Dr. Jumomi was 71. He is survived by his wife, six sons and one grandson. The funeral service was held today at Chekia village crown here in Dimapur. Later, his mortal remains has been taken to his native village, Zuko, for the last rites. Dr. Jumomi joined state government service in 1978 and later in the year 1993, he joined politics and served the state as the Minister of Fisheries and Home Guards from 1993 to 1989. He also served his community as the President and General Secretary of Western Sumi Hoho. He was one of the founding members of Western Sumi Kukami. Dr. Jimomi was also the first NCP president and member of various state PJP committees. Adoquet. <laughs> Ebu 
Late Dr. Kaketo was personally known to me as a good friend and uh, I found in him to be an amiable character, forthright and broad-minded uh, leader who always stands for the truth and justice. It is not only a loss to the family or to his village or to the Sumi community, but also a very big loss to the assembly constituency people of Gaspani. And the void or vacuum created will be difficult to fill the Dr. Kakedo's family is not a stranger to the people of Chakruma. Dr. Kakedo is a man of integrity. Because of his leadership qualities in both social and political, he was elected to represent the people of 5 Gaspani 2 Assembly Constituency in 1993. Even though political scenario have changed, his concern for the society have not changed till his last break. It was through his initiative and leadership that the Chakrama People Organization and Western Sumbi Hoho were brought nearer to each other when we decided to have a coordination meeting on 17 July 2020 at Shumogadima town. His selfless services towards our society in different fields and cap uh, capacities will be ever cherished. It's someone that I know who had the biggest heart. He was brave, he was bold, he was courageous, never afraid to say anything that he stood up for. Many a times he may have been wrong, many a times he may have hurt people knowingly, unknowingly. We are not perfect, we all have our vices. Therefore, I kneel before you if he has hurt anyone, knowingly, unknowingly, to forgive him. Nung shkimti ipna mtana momiti bizna. Nung heb developer kimets bizna ip nikhavets law. Najinikana wila baba bra. Kun lawa mon kan bi. Bi avridi shekwile to morom bra wila baba. Lama kuridi bi. Ipu. Nieno shugru. Rumang yogan ene heli. Kukne moe. Kemo pala ki vishu ipeng yogan ekea. Ikip ni khavetsa. O ipu. Iza batuka jesi na kade bila toani. Ningna. Mtana no kimel. Mopizna no. Heb te vetsa pa. Ningkip ni khavets lo. O haki vishu ilo. Apu opala amlagi jishpeng shani. I ask forgiveness from all of you if you had, my father or our family have hurt you in any way. Please forgive us. We will miss you very much, but we know that this is not the end, that this is not goodbye. We have the deep, blessed hope that we will meet again someday. Until that day comes, we will miss you. We love you. Ipucho, amlugit je shibizna ulvene. No ninki me keto e ningi lakina laki me prisna ta tu ninge olok to ola laki e ninkum zok sholinge akibi 
Along with the rest of the country, Nagaland launched the first round of intensive pulse polio immunization drive today across the state. Speaking at the launching program at Upper Primary Health Center, Shikazu in Kohima, Principal Director of Health and Family Welfare, Dr. Nekrelia Kimiao said despite the hard times in combating COVID-19, the immunization of polio has brought change millions of people's life. Kimiao encouraged the health staff workers to reach out to all eligible children from 0 to 5 years throughout the state. We have all gone through a hard time combating this COVID-19. You know, virus is an organism which even the world over today we are not to we are not able to find even a concrete answers but in particular for this polio virus this immunization has really brought about a change in the lives of millions of people and today what the country can see that we are in a way eradicated this polio from the country. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Kohima Dr. Vizokolo Teo informed that health workers throughout this district would conduct three days house-to-house -house visit to administer polio to the children from 0 to 5 years. State Immunization Officer Dr. Ritu Ter informed that polio drops would be administered to 1,51,458 children throughout the state with 2,206 polio boots, while which will be manned by 9,096 health personnel and 441 supervisors along with vaccines and other logistics. Or we also call as intensified pulse polio immunization day. It's a coverage for polio vaccines for zero to five years. And all across the state, we have several booths, and for the next two days also, we'll be going door to door with our oral polio vaccines for our children. This IPPI initiative was started with an objective of 1,800% coverage under oral polio vaccine. It aimed to immunize children through improved social mobilization, plan, mobile operations in areas where polio has almost dis disappeared, and maintain a high level of moral among the people. Oral polio vaccine is safe and effective in providing protection against the paralyzing polio virus. Ukraine President Volodymyr Zelensky spoke to Prime Minister Narendra Modi over the current situation in his country and urged India for its political support in United Nations Security Council against Russia, which is continuing its military operations in Ukraine. Taking to Twitter, Zelensky said, more than 100,000 invaders are on our land. They indeciously fire on residential buildings, urged India to give us political support in UN Security Council, stop the aggressor together. The Prime Minister called for an immediate cessation of violence and a return to dialogue. PM Modi expressed his deep anguish about the loss of life and property due to the ongoing conflict. He reiterated his call for an immediate cessation of violence and a return to dialogue and expressed India's willingness to contribute in any way towards peace efforts, a PMO release said. The Prime Minister also conveyed India's deep concern for the safety and security of Indian citizens, including students present in Ukraine. U.S. President Joe Biden has approved military aid for Ukraine worth $350 million U.S. million as it struggles to repulse a Russian invasion. In a memorandum to Secretary of State Antony Blinken, Biden directed that $350 million U.S. million allocated through the Foreign Assistance Act be designated for Ukraine's defense. Ukrainian soldiers repulsed a Russian attack in the capital, the military said, Saturday after a defiant. President Volodymyr Zelensky vote his pro-Western country would not be bought by Moscow. Russia claims its assault on Ukraine is aimed only at military targets, but civilians have been killed and injured during Europe's largest ground war since World War II. A missile struck a high-rise apartment building in the city's southwestern outskirts near one of 
Kiev's two passengers airports, Mayor Vitaly Kechoska said, leaving a jacked hole of ravaged apartments over several floors. The rescue workers said six civilians were injured. The conflict has already driven hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians from their homes. UN officials said more than 120,000 Ukrainians have left the country for Poland, Moldova and other neighboring nations. Amid rising tensions between Russia and Ukraine, Defense Minister Rajnath Singh said on Sunday that India never attacked any country and this principle must be followed to achieve peace in the world. His comments come amid the Ukraine-Russia conflict. Bharat Sadaiv se Shanti ka puja di raha hai. Bharat Sadaiv se Shanti ka puja di raha hai. Aur Bharat dunia ka keela desh hai. Jis ne nao to dunia ke kisi desh par kabhi akkarman kiya hai. न दुनिया के किसी देश की एक इंच जमीन पर कभी भारत ने कब्जा किया है और विश्व शांति के लिए हम चाहते हैं सभी को इस सिद्धांत को मानना चाहिए अब यूक्रेन की जो घटना हुई है हम लोग चाहते हैं शांति किसी तरीके से कायम हो लेकिन आज हमारे प्रधानमंत्री जो भूमिका निभा रहे हैं उसकी जितनी भी प्रशंसा की जाए वह कम है The second evacuation flight carrying 250 Indian nationals who were stranded in Ukraine arrived at Delhi airport via Romania on February 27. Union Civil Aviation Minister Joytri Aditya Skinda welcomed the citizens. Manipur Assembly Elections, Janata Dal, United Candidate from Seetriago, Rojit Waheng Pam, was attacked by unidentified persons and is reported to be stable now while being admitted in ICU. The mother of the JDU candidate, Waheng Pam Surbala Devi, said that they do not know who tried to kill him but should be caught. She added that Rojit was targeted out of political rivalry. Earlier on Saturday, the high-octane poll campaigning in Manipur came to an end, setting the stage for the first phase of assembly elections in the state, where the part the Janata Party is seeking to retain power while Congress is pinning hope on its six-party coalition to oust the Biran Singh government. Elections for the 60-member Manipur Assembly will take place in two phases on February 28 and March 5. As many as 38 seats will go to the polls in the first phase while voting in 22 constituencies will take Take place in the second phase. Amid escalating tensions in Ukraine, International Society for Krishna Consciousness has opened the temple gates for needy people in the Eastern European nation. While speaking to ANI, Vice President of ISKCON, Kolkata Radha Raman Das said, ISKCON, temples all over Ukraine are ready to serve people in need. Our devotees and temples are committed to serving those in distress. Our temple doors are open for service. ISKCON has over 54 temples in Ukraine and over devotees and the temples are trying to serve others in whatever way they can serve. Today morning we got an update from our devotees in Kiev and by Lord Krishna's grace all of them are safe and our 54 temples are safe too, he added. Today morning we called one of our devotees there in uh, Kiev. Uh, situation is of course very tense, uh, a lot of uh, bombing is happening, devotees are concerned. But same time, uh, devotees know that you know uh, Krishna is there, and uh, our devotees they are so brave that they focus on seva. So our devotees they always stand with others in difficulties. In Ukraine, we have more than 54 temples centers there, and our temple doors are open to serve others. Uh, we know that uh, situation is difficult. Uh, the, the, their devotees they are also concerned. Days after International Mother Language Day, Prime Minister Narendra Modi on February 27 said that people in the country should speak their mother tongue with pride. The Prime Minister highlighted that Tamil is one of the oldest languages in the world. He pointed out that in 2019, Hindi was the third most spoken language in the world. It is our mother tongue. We should speak it with pride. 
के 75 साल बाद भी कुछ लोग ऐसे मानसिक द्वंद में जी रहे हैं जिसके कारण उन्हें अपनी भाषा अपने पहनावे अपने खान पान को लेकर एक संकोच होता है जबकि विश्व में कहीं और ऐसा नहीं है हमारी मातृभाषा है हमें उसे गर्व के साथ बोलना चाहिए और हमारा भारत तो भाषाओं के मामले में इतना समृद्ध है कि उसकी तुलना ही नहीं हो सकती हमारी भाषाओं की सबसे बड़ी खूबसूरती ये है कि कश्मीर से कन्याकुमारी तक कच्छ से कोहिमा तक सैकड़ों भाषाएं हजारों बोलियां एक दूसरे से अलग लेकिन एक दूसरे में रची बसी हुई है भाषा अनेक भाव एक सदियों से हमारी भाषाएं एक दूसरे से सीखते हुए खुद को परिष्कृत करते रही है एक दूसरे का Amid Russia-Ukraine war, Bihar Deputy Chief Minister Tariq Shor Prasad on February 27 informed that the state government has a list of about 273 students stranded in Ukraine and will bring them back on its expenses. कि हमारे सम्मानीय मुख्यमंत्री श्री नीतीश कुमार जी ने जिस प्रकार से बिहार के लगभग दो बच्चे बच्चों का एक संकलन आया है इसकी संख्या बढ़ भी सकती है और वो कैसे बिहार आए इसके लिए संपूर्ण रूप से चिंता हमारी बिहार की सरकार ने की है मुंबई में बिहार फाउंडेशन को लगाया गया है और दिल्ली में बिहार भवन में जो हमारे स्थानिक आयुक्त और पूरी बिहार सरकार की अधिकारियों की टीम है वो सारे मामले को देख रही है और बिहार सरकार सरकारी खर्चे पर उन्हें घर तक A special evacuation flight of Air India carrying 250 Indians landed at the Delhi airport in the early hours of February 27. Air India's AI-1942 is operating as a special charter flight from Pujaris to Delhi airport. It was a well-coordinated effort. It was special for us to airlift them, Indian students, back into their home country. We are glad to complete this process on time, said Captain Anjit Bardwaj on being asked about the challenges he faced. We had quite good support from the air traffic control. network all the way from Romania back into India via Tehran and Pakistan we were provided direct routes without even asking for them he added so it was uh, actually a very unfortunate event that uh, started off between Russia and Ukraine uh, we were pulled out for this flight last night and it was a short notice uh, preparation but it was a well coordinated effort by the airline the government agencies and all the involved individuals into the process both in india and uh, in romania uh, it was uh, definitely a special day to evacuate uh, 250 people stranded in uh, ukraine who were uh, moved into romania by the local authorities got the government authorities and then uh, we were pulled upon for the task for uh, airlifting them back to the country That's all we have for now. Keep watching Hornbill TV.